Okay, so fairly typical build. Summer Shimikaze, no surprise there. Stalingrad, Moskva, Moskva, no surprises. Yoshino, unusual, but not unprecedented. Des Moines, of course. Yamato plus Kremlin for the battleships. Thunderer plus Kremlin from the Harbingers. Double Des Moines, double Stalingrad, double Venezia. No real surprises from either team there, although Shimikaze making more of an appearance than I had expected. The King of the Sea Ted action tended to see the Summers dominating over the Shimikaze. However, let's see what happens. So, starting with the party boat, Schlaugraf makes an early start. Tubi takes a little while to get his Yoshino underway, but everyone else is on the move. I am on a boat. Technically, you are on a ship, not a boat. But hey, there we go. And heavy artillery is still running around in his Kremlin. Summers under Denny Lisa making an early play for point B. The Shimikaze, a bullseye sniper moving out for point A. No real surprises from anybody there. Slightly different deployment from the Harbingers. They've got Mr. Happy moving out in their Shimikaze. Again, straight line for point A. Interestingly, they have got a Stalingrad of Blues Boy taking what could be a sneaky backline into point C. And that, if, if the red lights don't proceed to put anything into point C, and it's looking like they aren't, that could give them a unexpected early advantage. And if they can then prosecute that to swing around through C and get onto the sides of the two Moskvas, this could get very unpleasant for the red lights once the shells start flying. Let's just take a quick look at what the red lights can see. So they can see Paul Ward and the Thunder, and that's probably going to tip the fact that there is an element of the fleet moving for C. And in fact, yeah, Funks is putting into a blocking position. Lucasius is doing the same, and they can put a limited degree of fire through that channel. Their corridor is going to be narrow, but it is there. Denny gets into point B, and the mightier jingles, heresy, <clears throat> proceeds to back off point B and is not blocking the cap. So that is going to give the red lights a potential early advantage. Mr. Happy and I Sniper are going to arrive in point A more or less simultaneously to each other. I Sniper might get there a little bit earlier, but it's going to be close. In fact, Ice Sniper is going to take it because Mr. Happy is taking slightly more distance to make sure he's properly on the western side, get into cover behind the island, and do a textbook King of the Sea reverse locking maneuver there. We should see Happy come into reverse pretty much now. Yep, there he goes. And a single salvo of torpedoes in the water just as there. Hey, you guys have got some company over here. So... Point B goes over to the red light. Point A is locked. Point C largely uncontested by the red lights, and that is a surprise. Let's see what they can actually see here. So they know the Thunderers to the northeast. They can't see anything active at the moment. All they can see are the Stalingrads, and in fact, that's right now all they can see is Two Tone Two, and that is going to get potentially very messy for. Two tone because unless he can dive behind that island, he's about to take an awful lot of crossfire. Okay, he makes the island, only loses 30,000 health in the process. He's still sailing half a boat. And Sharkfresh rolls into a sniping and blocking position there. Can he get a shot on Joost? I wonder. No, no visual, so he doesn't have a targeting solution. Right. If the red lights hadn't realized that point C is a problem, they have now. The heretic, mightier jingles, proceeds to get into point C and cap it. Red lights can see him, but they can't see the heavy support he's got. So if they do decide to say, hey, it's just one gearing, how much trouble there could there be? Well, someone's about to get a rather unpleasant surprise. And that's someone I suspect is going to be Denny Lisa who is toddling around the cap to have a look and see what he can pick up. And he is going to see, well, he's going to see Blues Boy. And if he gets much closer, he's going to pick up the Thunderer and the Des Moines as well. 
Blues Boy opens fire. They've seen Paul Ward. Then he's got his torpedoes in the water. Heavy artillery opens up, and he has got near perfect position on Paul Ward. Shots down into the Kremlin, and oof! Big chunks there from heavy artillery's 18-inch guns, but torpedo closing in. Donks the nose of the Kremlin as a consequence, misses the belt, and starts a flood. More armor piercing, but that's only cruiserweight stuff. That's not going to seriously bother a Kremlin. Shots out high explosive from Paul Ward and Thunder. Interestingly, heavy artillery switches his fire. Blues Boy takes a torpedo on the nose and was relatively angled against the 18 inch of heavy artillery. Starts firing back. He catches Lucasius on the side. Shots down. Lucasius takes. Moderate damage again, but it could be about to get a lot worse for him. Luckily, all of those salvos from Indignant stashed into the water. The next salvo goes high and donks off the armor, doing little more than scratch damage. Heavy and Lucasius both backing up, but we have an armor piercing coming in from Paul Ward in the Thunderer. Actually, no. No, that's high explosive. Badly scattered, however. Heavy artillery on fire. And I think Lucasius is burning as well, but the charge through C has largely bogged. Point B, secure, unopposed, and scoring for the red lights. Can the Harbingers manage to stage a charge through A and turn round onto the rear of the red light cluster at point B? They're doing a very good job of bottling up the red light ships, but they need to start turning that into crossfires and damage. Frank Svor goes down. Moskva explodes one radar out of the picture. However, they have still got, they've really got to close this vice a bit tighter than they have done at the moment. Two Tone is in a blocking position. Indignant is a bit too far out to really make his guns count, but the gearing, we have a destroyer fight developing over to the southeast. The Summers missed his torpedoes against the gearing and now it's the gearing sun. But Jingles, not that Jingles, is turning away. He has a fire going and his two forward five inch turrets are out of the equation at the moment unless he can get them back to play. And I think, however, that Denny has broken contact. Well, he had broken contact until he fired his guns again. So the imposter may very well proceed to get a few more shots in if he decides to. However, Juxt comes in, makes the kill on the Des Moines of Schlaudraff with his credit. Yeah, the Harbingers are slowly starting to tighten this loose bullseye sniper in a really bad place. And yep, there he goes. Dugleave takes out the Shimakaze. There goes a good chunk of their capital ship killing power on the western side. Tubi proceeds to drop torpedoes from the Yoshino, playing the kiting game by the numbers. Gets his high explosive away, but, well, he's playing it with a Kremlin. 18-inch guns do not care very much about a Yoshino's armor. And Paul Ward proceeds to tighten the vice a bit further, dropping Lucasius's Spes Moskva. So, let's see, what can the SRPSC boys do about this? The answer may well be not a great deal. That clamp they're in is now starting to turn into a crossfire. Tubi can kite, that's what the Yoshino is built for. But the problem with kiting, particularly when you have got something with 18 inch guns and a barrel of overmatch running towards you, is that it's kind of hard to turn it into solid kills. Okay, heavy artillery takes a Shimakaze torpedo on the nose and he gets a little bit cautious about poking out a bit further. Good thing for him because I think he's yeah he is actually drip all oh, he is actually in the kill box of that Shimakaze's torpedoes. He did not cut engine power hard enough. That is gonna be a dead Kremlin. One on the side. Did he flood? He has flooded. Can he control it? That's the question. Twelve and a half thousand thirteen. He has a repair party in play, so he's not dead yet. And those 18-inch guns are still in play. He decides to fire on Jukes at range. Can he actually see anything else? No, the Venezia was in its maneuver smoke. Dugiev comes out. And two control points under the control of the Harmingers at the moment. They are absolutely closing this vice 
This is textbook play by the Harbingers. If you go back to Universal View, we can see how they've just squeezed the party boats into the southern half of the map, and now they're just going to turn... Yeah. Heavy artillery goes down. There's no way that the red light guys can maneuver without exposing themselves to a crossfire. And even if they don't maneuver, they're still in a crossfire. They've got cannons in front of them, cannons behind them. Cannons to the left of them are volleying and thundering. I am on a boat. Might not be for very much longer. Where's, where's their gearing? Okay, the Mighty Jingles has actually dropped back. Nice bit of team play there. He's dropped a bit of smoke cover for Indignant. However, I think Indignant's a bit too far forward to take full advantage. Although if he backs in, there we go. So he's now back in the smoke and concealed against Sharkfresh's Yamato. Sharkfresh also diving into smoke. But, well, when you've got 18-inch guns firing, smoke don't work nearly as well as it does for the others. One last salvo away from Sharkfresh as he burns to the waterline. There he goes. 40 seconds, 6-0. Not quite a mercy rule game, but as close as you come. No losses to the Harbingers, and the uh, poor SRPSE guys just got flanked, cross-fired, and then pounded under the wave. So, yowzers. Very, very well executed and an absolute textbook stomp by the harbingers of their own apocalypse. Turned out the name's inaccurate. They were harbingering somebody else's apocalypse instead. Very well played to them.